Over the past decades, the world has witnessed China's dramatic changes. China's rise has been very peaceful. China was able to sustain its economic development while maintaining peaceful relations with neighboring countries and other nations. What's the true story of China's emergence onto the world stage? People to people exchange and cooperation really matters. It is people who determine the nature of politics. Moon Chung In. Former special advisor to South Korea's former president Moon Jae-in explains his country's unique perspective on China's rise. It is my great honor and pleasure to speak at the, the famous Jinan University. Chinese transformation has been marvelous in the past 40 years of reform and opening, China has become second largest economy in the world, the largest trading state in the world, and China has become factory of manufactured goods in the world. China has also become center of global supply chain. It's amazing changes. And as China has been able to materialize Xiaohang Suhui, the moderately prosperous country on the occasion of 100th anniversary of Chinese Communist Party's founding. And also, Chinese rise has been very peaceful. China was able to sustain its economic development and enhance uh, equality in society while maintaining peaceful relations with neighboring countries and other nations. And China also new model of, has become new model of development. China's model or Beijing consensus have become very, very popular throughout the world. More than that, China has become a country of international contribution. Okay. President Xi Jinping proposed the Global Development Initiative he also proposed the Global Security Initiative and, most recently, Global Civilizational Initiative. All these three initiatives aim at making greater contribution to international society through what China has achieved for the past 40, 50 years. It's an amazing transformation. It's a marvelous. Okay. Of course, they are, not, they are not without some challenges. You have a challenge of a middle-income country trap. You have a challenge of a Tsushima's trap, which Graham Allison aptly described. Okay. And also, your chronic problem of income and wealth inequality in Chinese society. And also, youth unemployment in China has become a big problem, too. But I personally believe that China will be able to overcome those challenges. Then how South Koreans see Chinese rise? South Korea is divided. A group of people in South Korea see Chinese rise in negative terms. They see China, Chinese rise as a threat to peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula. Therefore, they think that the South Korea should strengthen its alliance with the United States. They also argue that South Korea should enhance trilateral security cooperation with the U.S. and Japan. And they wanted to join Quad. Okay? They wanted to pursue Indo-Pacific strategy. Naturally, to what? Encircle and contain China. Their approach is somewhat different from the past governments. And they argued that uh, we should maintain good relations with China. However, we should realize the difference with China. And they support the idea of a coalition of democracies. They think that China has a different value. Okay? Therefore, what they argue is this 
uh, what Chinese call the Hualat Butong, okay? Uh, while recognizing difference, but try to maintain harmony. But they give a more emphasis on difference rather than commonalities. There is one group of people, but there is another group of people in South Korea, which are mostly liberals and progressive. They see Chinese rise as very positive to peace and stability as well as pros prosperity on the Korean Peninsula. And they argue that while maintaining alliance with the United States, South Korea should strengthen strategic cooperative partnership with China. They see China as a vital tool, security and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula because China has a great influence over North Korea. Okay. China can make an enormous contribution in preventing North Korea from taking pro, uh, provocative behavior. Okay. And also they argue that uh, China is essential for, for the peace stability in Northeast Asia. They emphasize more cooperation with China in the direction of open regionalism and multilateralism. And they argue, as opposed to Hua Putong, they argue that the Chu Dong Juni, they emphasize commonalities with China while taking aside differences. Therefore, we have two different paradigms. Right now, we have a conservative government in South Korea, but previously, a liberal progressive government in South Korea have emphasized close cooperation with China. But there is one unfortunate development in South Korea. There is a rise of anti-Chinese sentiment among people. That's very negative. I know K-culture is quite popular in China, but in South Korea, there is growing uh, uh, public per perception of a Chinese image. It has something to do with the influence of Western media, but the, the effect. Uh, overall, public perception of China has not been very, very favorable. favorable. Therefore, I think we need to overcome that kind of overall ambience in South Korea. Nowadays, diplomacy is not the monopoly of the government. People play a very, very important role. Think tanks, scholars, media, they all play a very important role. Third, I would argue that the people to people exchange and cooperation really matters. It is people who determine the nature of politics. If people have a better understanding of China, if those people shape the political nature in South Korea, then it is natural for China and South Korea to promote bilateral relations. And finally, it is an objective fact that there has been distortion and bias of China throughout the world. And I think Chinese government and people should work together to overcome the bias, even the demonization of China. In the sense, Chinese people need a unity. Chinese people should work together to get rid of those kinds of negative campaigning of China in the world. In that way, China can have a better relations with South Korea. China can be a really responsible great power on the world stage. I firmly believe that the Chinese government and people have such a kind of wisdom and competence. Thank you very much.